The battle between the Federal Reserve and the markets and traders is set. Now, the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell have been set on crushing markets, in his words, committed to it. And of course, that's crushing the markets to bring down inflation. And he's done a good job. But his tough talk doesn't seem to be working anymore. And the markets and the traders have called the Fed's bluff. Now, after the last Fed meeting where Jerome Powell explained how there would be more pain ahead and how he would rather do too much and break something than not do enough, the markets rallied. So what is going on here and what should we expect and do? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down the battle, the players and the lines that have been drawn. We'll look at what has been said, what's been done and what asset prices are doing. And of course, most importantly, what we should be doing with our own accounts as we watch for this to develop. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss and I make these videos to change the way you think about money because Almost everything you learned is wrong. Almost everything that they tell you is wrong, maybe intentionally. And let's dig into what is going on and why there's such a big discrepancy between what this guy Jerome Powell is saying and what the markets are saying and of course, what we should be doing about this. So, um, the Fed. The Fed is crushing the markets. Jerome Powell says we're committed to it, crushing demand. All right, so we wanna make everybody broke. We wanna bring the unemployment rate up. We want to bring asset prices down so people feel broke so they don't spend money. And if they don't spend money, hopefully inflation will come down and he doesn't look so bad. Unfortunately, that is what he's doing. Now, since he announced this, since he announced the tightening, which was in November of 2021, he said that we're going to start tightening. They didn't actually start doing it until um, the first quarter of 2022. But from that time, we first started risk assets started selling off. The market started selling off first Bitcoin, then the NASDAQ, then tech stocks, then the S&P 500. And a lot of people were expecting for the Fed pivot to come. Oh, when the markets drop 20%, the Fed will have to pivot, right? And so everyone starts talking about this pivot. But Jerome Powell kept saying, no, we are committed to it. We are going to crush demand and we're going to dig into that more. So let's see what the heck is happening when he's so committed. The, the markets the asset prices, they've been calling the Fed's bluff. Calling the bluff. Is the Fed worried markets aren't taking its aggressive policies seriously? I mean, come on, the Fed talks tough. Jerome Powell has used words that he's never used before. Now you have to believe that every word the Fed puts out is measured. There's like psychologists look, psychoanalyzing every single word, trying to understand what's gonna happen out there. And when he goes and says, pain, pain, pain ahead, three times in one single presser, he's pretty serious. There's pain ahead. And then the market responds bullish and it bounces. And he, and he goes back, he says, wait, 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 you didn't hear me. Like there is pain coming. We are going to crush prices, but the markets respond bullish. Powell talks tough, but the market sees the constraints and that's the deal. So if you're smart enough, if you're paying attention to this channel and I'm breaking this down for you, you see that even though the Fed says they're going to do this, we know that they are serious. I believe that he is serious that he wants to do this. The problem is, is we know the walls, the constraints that he's going to run up against and why he won't be able to do or get done exactly what he wants to do. Now we can go back to December of last year and we can see that the bond market is calling the Fed's bluff, the bond market. Now remember, we like to look at the bond markets, the debt markets, the credit markets, because they're more of a leading indicator. The stock markets are a lagging indicator. Stock markets tell us what happened. Bond markets tell us what's gonna happen. So the bond market back in December of 2022 was calling the Fed's bluff and it set stock up for gains in 2023. Now, I made a video last year telling you that my probability of a massive crash happening this year, we're going down, 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 down. I got people telling me they're gonna unsubscribe to my channel because I said that, literally. But here we have it. It sets the stocks up for gains in 2023. How could that be? I thought we we're having another 50% crash. David Hunter, uh, Harry Dent, uh, Peter Schiff, all these people calling for it. Well, the bond market's calling the Fed's bluff. Now we can see here that what's really happening is the markets are confused, all right? The Fed's messaging appeared a little bit confusing. 
They're not sure what to think about it. Powell pushed back heavily. He was very, very direct, pushed back on the idea that there would be any rate cut next year. He's like, look, we're not cutting rates. As a matter of fact, we're gonna take rates high and we're gonna leave them there for a long period of time. That's what he said, and I believe him. But he also said that he was not thinking about thinking about raising rates. He said he wouldn't raise rates for four years, and then he did. So sometimes you have to change your mind, and even though I believe he's saying there won't be a rate cut next year, he may be forced to change his mind. We're gonna take a look at that. Now we can see the Fed Fund's outlook, um, he said, will probably be up to 5.1%, which is very hawkish, meaning they're gonna keep going. They're gonna keep crushing demand. But policymakers uh, for the 2023 economic growth forecast um, showed that it slumped. The GDP growth is going down again, all right? On top of that, unemployment is going up. So growth, economic growth is going down. Unemployment's going up to 4.5%, a whopping 4.5%, uh, and inflation is clearly cooling. We're starting to see lots of disinflation. So with that, the markets are putting the Fed's hawkishness under intense scrutiny. Like, okay, the Fed's hawkish, and I believe what Jerome Powell is saying, but look at these conditions. GDP growth is going to zero or negative again. We got unemployment rate going up through the roof again. And we have um, inflation's clearly cooling. We don't think that Jerome Powell could do this. So the battle lines are drawn. The battle lines, this is what we're talking about in the video, right? The Fed or the markets, which one is gonna be? The Hawks may have come out to play, Jerome Powell and the Hawks, but the markets continue to disobey. They're not listening to what Jerome Powell has to say. Part of this is because of the Fed's magic exposed. What am I talking about here? So the Fed has their tricks and they have more tricks up their sleeves than most people could imagine. And that's why I referenced Harry Dent before. I've had him on my channel a couple of times. Uh, we'll link to some of his videos in, in, in the description down below. Um, and I like, I like Harry Dent. I've read like five of his books and I believe his data, his research is correct. Where he's been wrong is trying to nail the times of these. And the reason why he's been wrong is he's not taking into consideration how many tricks the Fed has up their sleeves. The thing with magic is it's just like sleight of hand, it's illusion, and if you can see what's going on behind the scenes, it starts to tell you a different picture. So, the Fed has these tricks up their sleeve, but there's also other forces. Forces like Janet Yellen, who also is fighting against the Fed. Janet Yellen runs the Treasury. The Treasury, the US Treasury, and the Federal Reserve are at odds. They want different things. Now, as a matter of fact, that's worth a whole video in itself. If you want me to break down why Janet Yellen and the Fed, I'm sorry, Janet Yellen is fighting the Fed and who's gonna win, leave me a comment down below and uh, I'll put a video together on that. And uh, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button <laughs> so when I, you know when I put new videos out. Now, so what we know is that Janet Yellen has been fighting the Fed. Now, I made a video, um, I believe this was in August of last year, uh, well, let's link to it up here, and I believe it's about why inflation has not peaked. We'll also link to the videos in the descriptions so you can watch them after you're done watching this video. But in this video, I explained why the Fed was gonna be stuck and how, um, how asset prices coming down were going to bring treasury receipts down and how the treasury would go broke because the Fed wasn't giving that money and tax rates coming down. And if that would happen, the treasury would be in a really bad situation and would be forced to act. That's exactly what's happening. The Treasury, Janet Yellen, has now been forced to act, and what we can see here is in October of last year, she said that we're taking steps to enhance the Treasury market. Enhance it. What does that mean? <laughs> Inject a little bit of uh, lubrication into the system, potentially. It says here that the U.S. Treasury is taking the steps um, to enhance it, but the U.S. financial system is functioning well, she says despite elevated global volatility. So despite, so even though there's a lot of volatility, the treasury market's working just fine, she says, but we're still taking steps, okay? So take that for what it's worth. Now what we can see, as soon as that she said that, what we could see happen is it started pushing against what the Fed wanted. The Fed wants a strong dollar. As the Fed began raising rates, the dollar, the Dixie, the dollar index, got stronger, stronger, stronger. But right here in October, when Janet Yellen started to take the steps, look what's happened to the dollar since then. It has been going down. It's down 9% since that time. 
Now, I made another video here. Um, this was just a couple of weeks ago. We'll link to it here, and we'll put it in the show description down below. And I talked about how the, now the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is another government organization that probably sides with the Treasury, went and changed the calculations of or changed the rules of how they measure CPI. And in that video, I said that now inflation is contained because they just changed the rules and it was time to go back into risk assets. And since that time, hopefully you watched that video and you took action, it got a couple hundred thousand views. Since that time, the markets have begun to rally. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at what has happened since this time. It looks at this point that the traders, the markets, have the advantage. They're the ones beating the Fed. They're the ones that seem to be optimistic on the Fed pulling off this soft landing. Now again, when I made a video last year saying that there may not be a big crash, we should take a look at that, people told me they were gonna unsubscribe from my channel because I thought maybe the market wouldn't crash, but yet here we are and we're watching risk assets pumping. Now, since I made that video, I'm showing how they changed the CPI basket, we've seen Bitcoin go on a tear, it's up over 40%. Risk assets, Bitcoin's up 40%. We've seen Coinbase, which is a proxy, a leveraged um, proxy to Bitcoin, is up 100%. You would have doubled your money just in the last couple of weeks if you would have bought Coinbase. Uh, Bitcoin, you're up 50%. What else? It's not just Bitcoin and crypto. Here's ARK. So this is Kathy Wood's fund, the ARK ETF. It's up 40% in the exact same time period. And this represents risk assets. This is all the, the tech stocks in this ETF right here. We see, um, and then here we have, these are the meme stocks. Now what is this telling us? The meme stocks, you remember GameStop? Uh, you remember that battle? So GameStop is up 30% in the same period. And then we have meme stocks. These are, these, are, these are zombies. These are dead companies. These are companies that stand basically no chance of success, Bed Bath & Beyond. It went, it, it, since the exact same period, notice they all have this deep divot right here. It went up 350% and it's since cooled back down, it's up 100%. Bed Bath & Beyond, a company that has no chance of success. So why are meme stocks and risk assets all taking off? It's certainly not because of the STEMI, right? A couple years ago, it was easy. Well, the Fed pumped in trillions of dollars. They sent out stimulus to all these people. They're at home, they got Robin Hood, they're trading. These prices are going through, through the roof. Well, it's not the case anymore. There's no STEMI going out. So why are they pumping? Well, there's a couple of reasons why I think they're pumping. One of which is everybody knows they can't hold on to dollars. Two, they know dollars are losing value so fast, they know they have to increase their purchasing power. But more importantly, they know the Fed has finally hit their constraints. They know, they've seen the data, they've watched my videos, and they're seeing this. Now, another, uh, another place that we can see this is used cars. You might have been seeing a bunch of videos about the used car industry, how it's gonna bring down the whole market. I've thought about doing a video, but I just don't believe that. My good buddy George Gammon sure has though. You can go watch his videos about how the used car market is gonna bring down the whole market. I just don't think that's the case. So I haven't bothered to bring that sensationalism to you. But the cars are telling us a completely different story. So while all those other people are making videos telling you how the car market's gonna bring down the rest of the markets, as a matter of fact, the data is showing something different. Mannheim, which runs all the auctions. So if you're a car dealer, you bring in used cars, you can send them to the auction, they go around the country. And so that's the best place to look at this used car data. And what we can see is that the, the price of cars was going up, 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 right? Used cars went up 35, 40%, you know that. Um, but then over the last couple months, the used car prices have been coming down. This is what all those people are making the videos about. Used car prices, they're coming back down. The whole world's gonna die. Not really. And what we've seen right here, this little green part right here, is now car prices are going back up. As a matter of fact, cars jumped the fastest rate since November of 2021. Now why is that? Why are cars jumping? It's not typical and it's not seasonal. So a lot of times you have seasonal adjustments to things. Um, it's not a seasonal reason. Why are they going back up? It's again, because money is starting to loosen up. Markets are starting to move. People are starting to feel optimistic. People are not as worried about the Fed crushing demand as they were before, even though Jerome Powell's trying to stay hawkish and harsh. So this is the paradox, the Powell paradox. This guy's paradox, look at that face. <laughs> it's a face you could trust, right? 
I don't know. I don't know. So Powell says he's, quote, sticking to the script. He's going to continue raising rates. He's going to leave them high for a long time, just like he wasn't going to raise them for four years. He's going to leave them high for a long time. He's suggesting that they're going to continue raising rates to get to a 5.1% rate peak. But apparently, the markets don't agree. I've shown you all the asset prices, including used cars. And so what investors are hearing, like you and I, we're hearing, no, 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 we're hearing disinflation. So disinflation, so you have inflation prices going up, but nothing goes up in a straight line. So these periods where it goes down, this is called disinflation. So we're hearing disinflation. I think we might even see deflation this year. That is the last thing the Fed wants. Go back and watch that other video. We'll link it in the show notes down below to get the full data on that. But investors are hearing disinflation. We're seeing potentially deflation coming. We're seeing the Treasury is fighting against the Fed and the markets are responding and they're ignoring the hawkish message. So what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, we want to tread carefully. We are certainly not out of the woods by any means. Is there another big market crash coming this year? There could be. We don't deal in terms of possibilities. We deal in terms of probabilities. Everything's possible, right? Everything's possible. I, uh, the extreme I use is aliens could, could destroy the world tomorrow. It's possible, but it's not very probable. The probability of that happening is like barely over 0%, right? Um, and so we think about what's possible, but really what we think about is what's probable. And so we're not out of the woods yet. Could we have another big market crash coming? Yes. Now, in your opinion, you watch the Harry Dents, and the Peter Schiff's and the David Hunters, are you 70% sure that's gonna happen? Okay, 70%. That means there's a 30% chance it doesn't, okay? Are you 80%, 90%, 50-50, okay? So you need to tread carefully. We're certainly not 100% out of the woods. There could be another big market crash coming. It takes a while for these changes the Fed has been doing to make its way through the market. We may not see these start to manifest till Q2 of this year. We need to be treading carefully. However, what we want to do is we want to move forward with a risk-adjusted plan. So when I made that video a month ago that we'll link in the show notes down below explaining how this BLS change, the CPI change calculation basically puts an end to uh, inflation and we should get back into risk assets, we do that with a risk-adjusted plan. So if I had money sitting on the sidelines that I didn't put into the market, I would say, okay, I should start putting money back into the markets. I had to make a video about this to my private group um, because they were confused on this, so I'll give it to you now. Um, and if you wanna know more about my private group, there's a link down in the description below. But basically what we say is, look, we're not, we're not guaranteed anything. And so if I think there's a 70% chance the markets will go down some more, that means there's a 30% chance it won't. So what I would do is I would take 30% of that cash on the sidelines and I could put it into position now. The 70% stays in cash, so if the market goes back down more, I can dollar cost average back in, all right? Now, adjust that percentage based off of what you think the probability is the market will drop from here. That's the risk adjusted plan. Now, where are we putting the money? Well, as I've been banging the table on for about a year now, energy, commodities, I'm super bullish on gold, as you already know, gold, gold miners and silver, and of course, Bitcoin, as I've shown you the charts, a lot of the gold miners are up over 100%. Bitcoin's up over 40% and some of the uh, Bitcoin derivatives are up over 100%. Energy continues to be a good play. So this is where I'm putting my money. I'm doing it as a risk adjusted plan and I'm treading carefully. I'm not taking 100% of my cash in the market because we're still in a risky situation. Does that make sense? Let me know what you think. What is your probability, your base case of the market crashing. Do you think there's an 80% chance the market's gonna crash this year, this calendar year, or a 20% crash? Let me know down below in the comments down below. As always, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you don't, you can give me a thumbs down. That's okay, I'm a big boy. But at least tell me why in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button while you're at it. And that's what I got, to your success. I'm out.